the dope man. The rise of the dope man in the 90s. So, we in the early 90s now. So this thing on steroids. I'm in middle school. I had an older sister. She was in high school. By this time, we've moved on another street. And both of my godparents had passed away. So I was with my parents full time. Now, my parents, they were in their 30s. My mom was in her early 30s, and my dad was in his mid-30s. My dad worked at Imperial Sugar Refinery, and my mom was a bus driver for the local school district. We had just got a brand new house. I became a latchkey kid. And for y'all don't know what a latchkey kid is, you get a key, you go home, and you lock yourself up in the house until somebody else get home. So I was at home by myself until my older sister got out of school. So on the weekends, we go to the neighboring town where my dad was from, and we got an eye full. In his town, it was lit. It was popping. As many people that were smoking the dope, it was two people selling it. We would see dudes in nice cars. They had all the women going crazy, pulling out wads of money. And back then, the Fleetwood Cadillac was the lit. But if you was the dope man, you was in a Benz or a BMW. They always wore matching outfits. A lot of gold rings and chains. The gold teeth was a staple in the South, so most of the guys had a mouth full of gold. This is where I learned the difference between a nickel and a dimer and the dope man. All the chicks wanted to be the dope man's bitch. All the fly ones, anyway. So I would see my older, you know, family members, females, dress up and try to stay on point all the time. People would come outside dressed down just to go and get the mail out the mailbox. This little silly stuff they would do to try to get the attention of these dudes. And so where I'm from, the rodeo was a big deal. So we also go to the rodeo on the weekends too and just see a lot of bull riding and, you know, they'd be frying fish, selling all kind of food, barbecuing. It was just a place to be on the weekends. That's where it was popping at a lot of times. So a lot of the cowboys was pushing the dope too. And a lot of people think rodeo was just like some bull, but rodeo is it's big money in rodeo. It's a, it's a top sport. So as we walked around the arenas and was peeping everything out, having a good time, you know, a lot of people would recognize our faces because everybody knew everybody down there. And that's just how it was. You know, a lot of my dad's friends were in the game, so they would come by the house and I'd see the cars, the money, the jewelry, the fly watches. I'd seen how they swag, how they talked. These dudes stood out. So if, it was, if, the, if the dude was a dope man, you knew he was a dope man because the dope man had a certain you know, swagger. He had a certain uniform. And so did they women. And speaking of the women, these were your, you know, everyday people that you would see in your neighborhood. Or they might not be from your hood. It might be somebody they snagged from somewhere else. But they women stood out. They called them thoroughbreds. Is what we call them in Texas. And if she was tall, she was considered a stallion. So anyway, this is before the builder bodies. These women were a threat to all the other women, and later they became targets. So all the hating started. Different women began to fight over these dudes. And a lot of these girls were in high school. These high school girls was going with these grown-ass men that was out here slanging dope. And these grown men, they took advantage of them being in high school. They would give them money, you know, keep them quiet, buy them all kind of clothes, you know, show them around, show them the game. But eventually this shit turned sour. These girls started to fight each other. It started in the school and it spilled over into the streets. They started slicing each other up, running each other down with cars. And the men, they stood back and laughed because it was entertainment for the hood. Until the dope man met his match, which is his bitch. These chicks started to get spiteful. They started calling dropping dimes on different dudes because most of these girls end up pregnant at a young age. Then they found out it's three or four girls pregnant for this dude. So it just became chaos everywhere. The few elderly people that were left, they started calling the police. 
So the sirens and the cops was just popping up every now and every time somebody tried to make some money, the police would be riding through or coming through looking for somebody. Shit just got hot. It seemed like every girl from the age 16 to 25 was pregnant. Now it's turned into a war zone. You got the dolphins running everywhere. They on bikes. They're walking around like zombies from The Walking Dead. You got these chicks out here with babies on their hip in the street fighting one another. And it's like people just started to get fed up with how shit was going. All hell broke loose. And then everything started to unravel. Because then that's when the killing started. Because people started coming for people's spot. And that's where I'm going to end it with the killing.